In this problem, we're doing some deductive reasoning with conditional statements. And conditional statements are those if-then statements. And at this point, you probably already know that logicians use this notation, p arrow q, to stand for if p, then q. There are three rules to know about here. Uh, and they've got big fancy names, the truth of the contrapositive, the law of detachment, and the law of syllogism. And it's not so important that you remember the names as that you understand the logic of these. The truth of the contrapositive basically says that if you have a conditional that's true, so if p then q, if that holds, then the contrapositive is also true. Remember the contrapositive, you reverse the order of the statements and you negate both. So if we look down here at this one, here's your given statement, if Ali heard the radio, then I am in my first period class. If we assume that that's true, another statement that would be true would be the contrapositive. And let's see if we can write that. I'm going to get a text tool here. So the contrapositive, we're going to negate and switch around the hypothesis with the conclusion. So I'm going to start with the conclusion. The conclusion of this one is I am in my first period class. So I'm going to start with if it's not the case that I am in my first period class, then it's not the case that Ali heard the radio. All right, so that is the contrapositive. I've switched the hypothesis with the um, conclusion and I've negated both. So if this first part is true, then this contrapositive also has to be true. All right, that's the first rule. The second rule uh, is the law of detachment. And it says that if you have this if p then q, if that's true, and if p itself is true, then q has to be true. And if you think about that for a second, that should be pretty obvious. If you're saying if something is true, then the other thing is true, and that something is true, well, then the other thing has to be true. This kind of rule you can see down here uh, in this last one, it says, if John knows how to dance, then the tires are old. And then it tells you, John knows how to dance. Well, what that means is the tires are old. So that's what we can uh, conclude from that one. All right, one more rule. This is called the law of syllogism. And a syllogism is a three-part structure. It's got two um, if-then statements, and then that leads to a third if-then statement. And as long as these first two are true, then the second one, or this last one, has to be true as well. So if P, then Q, and if Q, then R, then if P, then R. So let's, let's take a look at an example of that to make it more clear. Uh, here it says, if the river is overflowing, then that is Frank's favorite joke. Okay, and we're going to assume the river is overflowing, so that is Frank's favorite joke. Not sure why that's funny, but that's what's going on here. Then it says, if that is Frank's favorite joke, then the group has eaten lunch. So if both of these are true, which is what we're being told, then we can go straight from the very first hypothesis to the final conclusion. So we can say, if the river is overflowing, then the group has eaten lunch. So that is the, the law of syllogism. And that's a little bit of work with deductive reasoning with conditional statements.